Welcome to our National University's Quiz Challenge here on Zim Paper's television network. My name is Robert Mukundiwa and I shall be your quiz master for the next two days. Sponsored by Say What and the Swedish Embassy in Zimbabwe, this event is in its second year with this however being the first time it is being shown in partnership with Zim Paper's television network, your prime partner ZTN. And we would like to welcome them as the students and of course as our partners say what onto the ZTN platform. Currently, the trophy that you see behind me is in the hands of the Harare Institute of Technology in the capital Harare, who concurrently hold the debating trophy as well in debates that were also beamed here on ZTN. Now, will they be able to fend off the challenge of nine other hungry marauding teams? Now, at the end of this two-day extravaganza, we will know for sure. But first, we commence the day today with a speech by the director of our proud partner, Say What, to welcome us to this auspicious occasion and make us absolutely comfortable as we start. Mr. Jimmy Wilford. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second edition of the National University's Quiz Show. My participants are looking very scared, smart, but I welcome you to this uh, second edition. Congratulations to all of you for being nominated by your colleges to represent them. This is the second edition, like what Robert said. Say what is working in partnership with the Swedish Embers to ensure that we bring this quiz show to you, us, which is now a flagship program amongst uh, the students. The quiz show is not meant to, to do anything that is extraordinary, but it's just meant to be, provide that platform for students who are in the tertiary institutions to have fun and put to test or put to use the knowledge that they have. Yes, this quiz show is coming at a time that we are battling with the pandemic, COVID-19. We are also going to hear some students sharing their views or maybe answering questions to do with the COVID-19, their perspectives. At the same time, remember last year, the first edition, we had three students for each college, and this year we're having two students for each college. We did our best to ensure that we cannot fail to do the quiz show because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are grateful to the partnership that we are having with the Swedish Embers at the same time with ZTA. To you students, I wish you all the best and to our viewers at home, please sit back, relax and listen to what the students, the cream of, this, uh, 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 the cream of, the, of our universities, what they are going to, to be doing. More importantly to our stakeholders and partners, this is an opportunity for our partners to identify gaps from the issues that are going to be raised by the students so that we can work together to ensure that we have a, a, a gender just nation where young people can be able to enjoy their sexual and reproductive health rights. Say what is working with the students from a non-clinical perspective. We are dealing with public health issues from a non-clinical perspective. Guys, I wish you all the best. I welcome you to this second edition of our, our, our National Universities Quiz. I thank you. Over to you, Robert. Thank you. So, going forward, of course, we have the universities, but we shall have rounds that we will have and we need to split our teams. Now, any of the 10 teams in the studio here today and tomorrow can be crowned champions. They don't know each other. However, if they want the tag champions, they have to be relentless. Now, please note that all efforts have been taken to ensure the protection of the health and safety of the students in light of COVID-19, which Jimmy alluded to. And we have in the studio an in-studio nurse attending to their health needs should any, uh, God forbid, arise. Now, the first episode has five universities and 10 students. The first team to finish answering will ring the buzzer. They will not get any additional points. 
but will no doubt have bragging rights for being the fastest bright bulb in the house. Now, for the sake of fairness, we're going to cross over live to my colleague Candice Mwakalele, uh, who is going to help us separate these 10 universities into two groups, Group A and Group B, after which Group A will join me here in the studio as Group B languishes in a quarantine area. Now, through a draft, uh, we're doing this in order to ensure impartiality. Now, Candice, over to you. Good morning, live from the ZTN studios in Harare, Zimbabwe. My name is Candice and welcome to the Say What National Universities Quiz Challenge 2020. Today is going to be an exciting day as we have 10 universities competing for the title of first place bragging rights, as well as, of course, getting the opportunity to take home the big trophy. Now, of course, we do have a bit of modalities that we will be taking us ourselves through, one of them being that we will have four elimination stages, and at each stage, we lose two universities. I am going to be helping, uh, helped out rather, by two Say What uh, representatives to pick our first round groups uh, according to how they will participate in round one. First off, how are you? I'm good, I'm good yourself. I'm good, thank you. And your name is? Mkosilom Sangwenya. All right, Mkosilom Sa is going to be picking the group A and uh, on my right is? Nonsigele Lomazinki, I'm the Say What HR officer. Right. And Nonsigelelo is going to be helping us pick Group B. Starting off with you, please dip your hand in there. You have only one piece of paper, yes? Please open it up for us. Chinoe University of Technology. Chinoe University of Technology, that is our first team on Group A. Group B. Please open it up. Uh, Manikalen State University of Applied Sciences. Okay. That is our first on Group B. Again. Remember, this is 10 universities that are being split in two groups for round one. Lopane State University. Wanda State University. Bindura University of Science Education. Great Zimbabwe University. National University of Science and Technology. Harare Institute of Technology. University of Zimbabwe. All right, so there we have it. We have our two groups picked for round one, and uh, we will be coming back to for the second stage of elimination to re-pick the teams that remain. I know you're curious about what's going on in front of me in the table. You will want to pay attention. We will be talking about this a bit more later on as well, but please make sure you're participating on the ZTN Facebook page as well as the Say What Facebook page. This is where you can be rooting for your favorite universities.
So, many thanks to the ever so glamorous colleague of mine, Candice Mwakalele, and thank you so much uh, for the, that rather onerous task. Now, of course, as we wait for my Group A to come in, I will recap what uh, that uh, gave us and, of course, what that pooling system gave us. Now, in Group A, uh, that means uh, pitted head-to-head -head will be teams Chinoy University of Technology, Bindura University of Science Education, the National University of Science and Technology, University of Zimbabwe, and Lupane State University. And of course, uh, Group PB will be having Gwanda State University, the Arari Institute of Technology, Great Zimbabwe University, Manikaland uh, State University of Applied Sciences, and the Midlands State University. So uh, now I have got my Group A in studio, and of course, we shall be studying start starting here in the studio i will start by welcoming you uh, of course into the studio and i hope your nerves are being ridden right and you are as calm as cucumbers as we start now i will introduce them uh, i will ask them rather to introduce themselves as we commence uh, round one now the first question uh, in round one or would be in the realm of family planning and contraception now i will ask you to introduce yourselves first uh, briefly and what programs that you're doing wherever uh, institution you're studying from i'll start with chinoy university of technology introduce yourself and the program that you'll be that you're reading towards hi i am cotton jacob i am doing international marketing hi i'm trained in Hawaii studying accounting Thank you very much, Chino University of Technology, and welcome. Bindura University of Science Education, please introduce yourselves and uh, likewise also tell us what you're reading towards. Mesim Toko, doing PG, Peace and Governance. Tanaka Bukitan, studying social work. Thank you. Uh, over to the National University of Science and Technology. Hi, I'm Rachel Pamala, doing Environmental Science and Health. Hi, my name is Tinashe Banda, Bikom Accounting student. Thank you, Rachel and Tinashe. I'll ask the University of uh, Zimbabwe to uh, follow suit. Hi, I'm Tashinga Mungofa, I'm doing accounting. And I'm Tembani Kumalo, I'm doing social work. Thank you, University of Zimbabwe. And finally, uh, Lupane State University. Hi, I'm Paidamo Marufu, doing human resource management. Hello, I'm Bonani, and I'm doing geography and geoinformation systems. So the uh, instructions have been uh, given to you. You do know that you can commence answering or writing down your answers on your slates as soon as you make sense of the question. Of course, you will then be, you will also be given 20 seconds, 20 seconds of which will commence uh, at the time I finish reading the question. Of course, you may start writing even before I finish the question if you perceive that you know, but uh, at no time or point are you allowed to write after those 20 seconds have lapsed. I will then ask that you reveal your answers, after which you will read the answers as you have written them. And I will then uh, furnish you with the correct answer before proceeding to the next question. Now, let the games begin. The first raft of questions are drawn from the category family planning and contraception. Question number one. What does the abbreviation COC in birth control stand for? What does the abbreviation COC in birth control stand for? Five, Five seconds. Four. Please stop writing. Please stop writing immediately. May you please reveal your answers. And first with the buzzer, congratulations UZ for uh, bringing the bright light. Let's hope your answer is as bright as that light. I will start with Chinoy University of Technology. Please read what you have written. Combined oral contraceptive. Next, Bindura. Combined oral contraceptive. National University of Science and Technology. Combined oral contraceptive. University of Zimbabwe. 
Combined oral contraceptive. Finally, Lupania State University. Combined oral contraceptive. The answer we sought was combined oral contraceptive. Question number two. Preventing unplanned pregnancy by calculating a woman's fertile period based on the length of her previous menstrual cycle is called what? What do you call preventing unplanned pregnancy by calculating a woman's fertile period based on the length of her previous menstrual cycle? Please stop writing. Please stop writing immediately. May you please reveal your answers. May you please reveal your answers. May you strictly read the answers that you have written, starting with Chinoy University of Technology. Fertility. Bindura University. Pure Duke Abstinence. National University of Science and Technology. Calendar Method. University of Zimbabwe. Menstrual Cycle. Lupani State University. We didn't write anything. Something wrong with your felt pen? No, no. It's writing. It's okay. I'm glad to hear that. The answer I sought was Calendar Method. Question number three, what is the contraceptive prevalence rate in Zimbabwe? What is the contraceptive prevalence rate in Zimbabwe? Ten seconds. Five, Five seconds. May you all stop writing immediately and please reveal your answers. University of Zimbabwe, you have a bright light up again. I will uh, start, however, with uh, Chinoy University of Technology. Please read the answer that you have provided. 68%. 68%. Bindra University of Science Education. 68.8%. National University of Science and Technology. 66.8%. University of Zimbabwe. 67.8%. And Lupani State University. 67%. The answer that was sought is, of course, 67%. Question number four. Give an, an example of a synthetic hormone used in oral contraceptive pills. Give an example of a synthetic hormone used in oral contraceptive pills. May we all stop writing and please reveal your answers. Now, starting with uh, Chinoy University of Technology, please read what the answers you have uh, written. Oestrogen. Bindura University of Science Education. Estrogen. National University of Science and Technology. Progesterone. University of Zimbabwe. Estrogen. And the Lupani State University. Estrogen. So the answers we sought were either estrogen or progesterone. And finally, in this uh, category, question number five. Given an example of a barrier method of birth control which does not require medical assistance. Give an example of a barrier method of birth control which does not require medical assistance. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. May 
we all stop writing and please immediately reveal your answers. I will start with uh, Chinoy University of Technology. Please read exactly what you have written. Abstinence. Bindura University of Science Education. Condom. National University of Science and Te Technology. Condoms. The University of Zimbabwe. Male condom. And uh, Lupani State University. Condom. The correct answer we sought was either the male or the female condom or simply condom. Category two will be drawn from STI, sexual, sexually transmitted infections, including HIV and AIDS. Category two, question number one. In immune suppression, the abbreviation IRIS stands for what? What does the abbreviation IRIS in immune suppression stand for? Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. May we all stop writing and immediately reveal your answers. Chinoy University of Technology, please read your answers. Nothing. It does stand for something, uh, except you wrote nothing. Uh, Bindura University of Science Education, please read your answer. Iris. Sounds up for Iris. Right up in the corner. Yeah. National University of Science uh, and Technology, please read your answer. Reproductive system. The University of Zimbabwe, please read your answer. No answer. And Lupani State University, please read your answer. Who wrote nothing? We really need to check our felt pens and see whether they're writing because this is shocking. The answer we sought was immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome. Immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome. Question number two. You don't need to rub your slates, evidently. An HIV test which indicates that a person does not have HIV when the person actually does have HIV is, to, is referred to as what? An HIV test which indicates that a person does not have HIV when that person in fact does have HIV, what do we refer to that uh, test as being? Please stop writing immediately and please reveal your answers. Nobody is hitting the buzzer anymore. Huh? It's getting warmer. Chinoy University of Technology, please read your answer. Rapid test. Bindura University. Antigen test. National University of Science and Technology. Rapid test. Uh, University of Zimbabwe. Wrong or false test. Uh, Lupane State University. Self-test kit. The answer we sought was false negative result. Question number three. According to the UNA's 2018 data, how many people are currently on antiretroviral treatment in Zimbabwe? According to the UNA's 2018 data, how many people are currently on antiretroviral treatment in Zimbabwe? Please stop writing immediately and brandish your answers for me to see. Starting with Chinoy University of Technology, please read exactly what you have written on your slates. 1.3 million. Bindura University. 33% um, or 3 million. 
National University of Science and Technology. One million. The University of Zimbabwe. 750,000. Lupani State University. 68%. The answer is 1,2 million. Question number four. Candidiasis is an STI caused by which organism? Candidiasis is an STI or sexually transmitted infection caused by which organism? Five seconds. Two, one. May you all please stop writing immediately and please reveal your answers. Starting with Chinua University of Technology, please read the answers that you have written. Fungi. Pindura University of Science Education. Lace. National Bac University of Science and Technology. Bacteria. The University of Zimbabwe. Bacterium. And Lupane State University. Parasite. The answer is yeast or fungi. And the final question in this category. Which STI is commonly referred to as drop in men? Which STI is commonly referred to as drop in men? Anidrop. Somebody's good with their STIs. May we all stop writing and reveal our answers. Starting with Chinoy University of Technology, please read the answer that you have written. Gonorrhea. Pindura University of Science Education. Gonorrhea. National University of Science and Technology. Gonorrhea. Uh, the University of Zimbabwe. Gonorrhea. Lupane State University. Gonorrhea. You are champions at Gonorrhea, evidently. Now, in that category where most of you had signed your leave forms and were practically not present, I'm happy at least that we ended that category on a high note. And indeed, the answer we sought was Gonorrhea, though not exactly spelt that way. Category three shall be drawn from uh, SGBV and sexual rights. SGBV and sexual rights. Question number one in category three. In sexuality education, what, do the, what does the abbreviation LGBTQIA stand for? In sexuality education, what does the abbreviation LGBTQIA stand for? Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Stop writing immediately. That, that, that was taxing. That was taxing. Please brandish your answers for me to see. Interesting. Starting with the Chinoy University of Technology, please read the answer that you have written. Lesbian, gay, transgender. Pindura University of Science Education. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex. National University of Science and Technology. Lesbians, gays, bisexual, transsexual, intersex. University of Zimbabwe. Lesbians, gay, bisexual, transsexual, queer, intersex, asexual. 
and Lupane State University. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, Q. Could you please sp spell the last word that you read? U U W E R. Thank you. Now, the answer that I sought was lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, queer, and asexual. Question number two in category three. When gender identity shifts between ma masculinity and femininity, it is referred to as what? When gender identity shifts between masculinity and femininity, that is referred to as what? Five seconds. Three, two, one. Stop writing immediately. And please show me, brandish your slates for me. Starting with the Chinoy University of Technology, please read exactly what you have written. Transgender. Bindura University of Science Education. Intersex transgender. National University of Science and Technology. National University of Science and Technology. Intersex. University of Zimbabwe. Transgender. And Lupane State University. Road You've nothing. lost your pen again. Yes. We will have to get that placed. The answer is gender fluidity. Question three, according to the 2019 Global World Health Organization report, what percentage of women have experienced either physical and or sexual intimate partner violence in their lifetime? According to the 2019 Global World Health Organization report, what percentage of women have experienced either physical and or sexual intimate partner violence in their lifetime? Five, Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Stop writing and please brandish your answers for me. Chinoy University, uh, please read your answer. 35%. Bindura University? 35%. National University of Science and Technology? 35%. The University of Zimbabwe? 35%. And Lupane State University? 60%. Your country is a very scary country, that one. It's a very scary country. The answer is 35%. Leads us to question number four. In what month do we start commemorating the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence? In which month do we start commemorating the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. Five, Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Stop writing and please brandish your answers with Chinoy University of Technology being the first to read their answer. November. Bindura University. November. National University of Science and Technology. November. University of Zimbabwe. November. And Lupane State University. July. Uh, the correct answer is November. July, that is winter. That is the last month we, in Zimbabwe. It will be winter. Yes. You must be mistaking it with winter. And finally, the last question in this category. Name any one of the two African countries which legally protect LGBTQI rights without limitations. Name any one of the two African countries which legally protect LGBTQI rights without limitations.
It's time. Brandish your answers. Chinoy University of Technology lead us in reading what you've written. South Africa. Pindura University of Science Education. South Africa. National University of Science and Technology. Botswana. University of Zimbabwe. South Africa. And Lupani State University. South Africa. The answer, one of uh, the two answers we were seeking were either Cape Verde or South Africa. Uh, Botswana is where our cattle run away into and we have to follow them when we lose our cattle in Zimbabwe. It's going pretty well, but if you think you people are having a tough time, you do know we are going to be asking the same set of questions to another team that we currently are holding in our quarantine area. Now, the people in quarantine, uh, of course, are not privy. They're not hearing what we're doing. They're not seeing us. And then, obviously, they don't have their gadgets. And there they are. We are seeing them. They're sitting there in limbo. They're in purgatory. They're scared. And they're more scared than you are. So trust me when I say uh, we've all still got a chance, of course. Uh, at the end of uh, the first two episodes, and that's the f those two rounds, the lowest team amongst all of you will be the team that will be knocked out. So if the lowest from this uh, particular episode has a better mark or a better score than the worst team in the next episode, then you are guaranteed of pro progressing to the next round. Of course, all the points that you'll have accumulated here will come to naught and you'll start a new slate and you'll be starting afresh. Not that it's a problem for you because you know how to keep a clean slate. In I've seen that in a number of questions that we've asked you. I'll be moving on to category four. Now, this will have questions on COVID-19, malaria, tuberculosis, mental health, and cancers of the reproductive system. First question, what does the abbreviation ARI in coronavirus clinical syndromes stand for? What does the abbreviation ARI in coronavirus clinical syndromes stand for? 10 seconds. Please stop writing immediately. May you please brandish the answers that you have written. Starting with the University of Technology, please read the answers that you have written as you have written them. Absolute. Bindura University of Science Education. AI. That's what I asked. National University of Science and Technology. Acute respiratory infection. Sorry, could you read that again? National University of Science and Technology. Infection. University of Zimbabwe. Active infection rate. And finally, Lupani State University. ARI. Hmm. The answer I sought was acute respiratory infection. Question number two. What term describes a type of mood disorder with marked changes in mood between extreme elation or happiness and severe depression during adolescence? What term describes a type of mood disorder with marked changes in mood between extreme elation or happiness and severe depression during adolescence. Five, Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. We all stop writing and brandish the answers that we have written. 
starting with uh, Chinoy University of Technology. Enzayet. Bindura University of Science Education. Period. Bindura University of Science Education. I didn't quite hear that. I would want you to repeat that. Period. Thank you. National University of Science and Technology. Depression. The University of Zimbabwe. Um, bipolar syndrome. And Lupani State University. You still have not found your felt pin. Well, the correct answer that I sought was bipolar disorder. Uh, please, at all times, ensure that your microphones are switched off. Thank you. Question number three. What percentage of people worldwide is estimated to suffer from any mental health disorder? What percentage of people the world over is estimated to suffer from any mental health disorder. Five, four, three, two, one. May you please stop writing and brandish your answers for me to see. And as always, uh, we start with uh, Chinoy University of Technology, please read your percentage. 60%. Pindura University of Science Education. 23%. National University of Science and Technology. 70%. The University of Zimbabwe. I'm 33%. Lupane State University. 25%. Mental health issues, of course, are a very important and pertinent uh, issue that really uh, we need to pay particular attention to. And it is unfortunate that we have uh, such a thing that plagues us as mental health uh, problems. Uh, no one person should be plagued by mental health disorder. But I dare say, fortunately, the figure is much lower than you uh, and would anticipate here. The answer is actually 10%, one in 10 people. You have seven in 10. Um, yeah, we had 70% somewhere. I think uh, that would be Nast? No, it's not that dire. But as I said, um, these are issues, especially where you come from as students, that really need to be looked at because uh, you come from very pressurized uh, situations and societies. And indeed, whenever uh, you see the red flags of mental health uh, challenges, it is always a, an absolutely fabulous thing to be alert and to assist our friends, our relatives, our colleagues. Leading us to question number four, on which day is the world to be? Tuberculosis Day commemorated. On which day is World TB Day commemorated? World Tuberculosis Day. On what day is World TB Day? Five, Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. May we all stop writing and please brandish the answers uh, that you have written for me. Chinoy University of Technology, please uh, read out what you have written. 23 March. Bindura University of Science Education. 23 March. National University of Science and Technology, please read your answer. 24 April. The University of Zimbabwe. 23 March. Lupane State University. 25 April. If you said you, if you had borrowed Nast's date, you would have gotten it and kept your month. It's the 24th of March. Last question in this category uh, before we move on to the, of course, this was the penultimate, and as we move on to the final category. In which year was the first program for cancer survivors launched 
where pink was first used as the, the designated color to raise breast cancer awareness. In which year was the first program for cancer survivors launched where pink was first used as the designated color to raise, raise breast cancer awareness? may stop writing and please brandish the answers that you have. Chinoy University of Technology, please read the answer that you have written. 1961. Pindura University of Science Education. 1961. National University of Science and technology. 2001. University of Zimbabwe. 2002. Lupane State University. We didn't write anything. Pen. It was a year you could have just, yeah. <laughs> Not that it really matters because the answer is 1990. And uh, just for free, it was at the Komen National Race for the Cure. So you will know that the uh, pink ribbon, of course, uh, marks, uh, marks uh, our commemoration for breast cancer and breast cancer awareness. Uh, before we get into this final uh, category and the final five questions, and if you think you're lagging behind, this is the, the last time that you've got to try and survive and make sure you make it into... Uh, the, the, the next uh, stage, we shall look yet again at our poor team that's waiting and in their limbo, in quarantine, there they are, no phones, they don't even know what time it is, I'll tell you that, they kept asking what time it was, they don't know what time it is, they don't have phones, they don't have any gadgets, they are really uh, taken away from the world and when you guys leave here, you shall be transported and held in a separate hel holding area until they are shepherded into the studio, uh, after which they shall also get a shot at these exact same questions, obviously for fairness, and be head-to-head -head on the worst performing teams in both sets of questioning will then determine who uh, joins us, the spectators, the people at home, and perhaps the adjudicators uh, in watching as progress continues for the rest of us. Category five is in climate change and environment. Quite a hot topic. Climate change and the environment. Question number one. In climate change, the abbreviation IPCC stands for what? What does the abbreviation IPCC stand for in climate change? Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Please stop writing your answers immediately and brandish your slates for me to see. May you please brandish. Starting with the Chinoy University of Technology, please read exactly what you have written. International Positioning Center. Pindura University. International Plant Committee. National University of Science and Technology. Integrated Parliament Climate Change. Uh, could you read that yet again? Integrated Parliament Climate Change. The University of Zimbabwe. International Partnership on Climate Change. And the uh, Lupane State University. International Plan Climate Change. The answer I sought was the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change.
The next question demands quite a bit of a handful. You need to be wary of uh, your fastest fingers as you write. Please define carbon sequestration. Define carbon sequestration. What is carbon sequestration? Time's up. Please stop writing immediately and brandish the slates for me. May you please show me the white side of your slates. Thank you. So, Chinoy University of Technology, what is your understanding of carbon sequestration? This is the amount of carbon, carbon exited into the air. Bindura University of Science Education, what do you understand? Gas which is emitted and trapped to avoid climate change. The National University of Science and Technology. It is the release of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The University of Zimbabwe. Um, emission of carbon which covers the atmosphere and traps sunlight and Lupane State University? C. C, okay. Well, uh, I will tell you sequestration by its very nature is exactly what we're doing to those guys in uh, quarantine. They have been sequestered, taken to a certain place and kept there. And that's where you can get a bit of help uh, in trying to define uh, that uh, term. The process of capturing and storing atmospheric carbon dioxide. The process of capturing and storing atmospheric carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide will have been sequestered or taken and held somewhere, like we are sequestering uh, the other group B. Third question, how many severe tropical cyclones has Zimbabwe experienced to date? How many tropical Cyclones has Zimbabwe experienced to date? What is the number of tropical cyclones that have unfortunately hit our shores? Five, four, Five seconds. Three, two, one. Stop writing. Please show me the answers that you have written. Starting with Chinoy University of Technology, please tell me the number uh, or answer that you have written. True. Bindura University of Science Education. Three. The National University of Science and Technology. Four. The University of Zimbabwe. Three. And Lupane State University. Four. Well, uh, I will say the answer there that we sought was actually six. And if we are to name them, the Cyclone Bonita in 1996, uh, Cyclone Jaffet in 2003, Fazio in 2007, Chiedza in 2015, and the last one, and she hit us in 2019, and that is Cyclone Idai. In which year, question number four, was the first World Climate Conference held? In which year was the first World Climate Conference held? Time's up. May you please brandish the answers that you have uh, written. And I will ask now that you read the answers that you have for me, starting with the Chinoy University of Technology. 1985. Bindura University of Science Education, please read your answer. 1969. 
National University of Science and Technology. 1960. And uh, University of Zimbabwe, please read your answer. 1991. Lupane State University. 1991. The answer that I sought was actually 1979. And bit of trivia, it was the 12th to the 13th of uh, February uh, in Geneva, Switzerland. Now, this is, I, I see you love your buzzer, Pindura. This is uh, the last question uh, that we shall endure uh, before leaving this cool air-conditioned space, which had turned rather hot. Uh, some of you, of course, I shall see in the next rounds. And depending on how the work has been uh, factored in and carried out by your next adversaries, one of you may not uh, be here to see me as we progress to the next stages. Perhaps this answer will save you. So one more question, one more opportunity to be saved. In which year did Zimbabwe ratify the United Nations Framework Convention of Climate Change? In which year did Zimbabwe ratify the, U the United Nations Framework Convention of Climate Change, on climate change? Five, four, three, two, one. Please stop writing immediately. And show me the answers that you have written. Uh, I will start with Chinoy University of Technology. Please read the answer that you have. 1997. Bindura University of Science Education. Nothing. No, you did write something. Can you read what you've written on your board? Okay. One, two. Uh, National University of Science and Technology. 1991. University of Zimbabwe. 2001. Lepane State University. 2010. University of Zimbabwe, you love your 2000s. I'm a 2000. Well, the correct answer is not 1-2. That's very early. That was very early. 1-2 uh, is, is a year that's too early for us to sign anything in Zimb uh, Zimbabwe. Bindura. Uh, I don't even think Jesus was born in the year 1-2. The correct answer is 1992, and uh, that date, just something for nothing, would be November the 3rd. November the 3rd. Now, many of you will progress to the next stages, as I said. One of you probably will not. When you go and are privy, of course, to the next round, to the next episode, episode two, where your adversaries will be here also battling out with the same questions, we shall, of course, be hoping for your good that they perform worse than the worst in your team so that at least you are able to progress. I will tell you where we've got people out there who are watching and watching uh, uh, keenly uh, you do not want to read some of the comments uh, if you thought I was savage uh, Felistas Masaya is worse uh, Melissa C. Mukundu thank you so much uh, for following with us Keith Tanaka uh, Magzinti thank you as well for uh, for watching with us and indeed, we've got a, a packed uh, and very, very interesting day ahead as we continue with this quiz. I will say you offered very, very interesting insights. And I could see um, that our nation has a great pedigree. Now, we shall be waiting for our adjudicators 
to at least uh, tally and then we will have the marks and points and we will know uh, by the end or at least right here at the end of this episode where our p or how our points tally stands. <laughs> So, as I said, absolute pleasure uh, having you here. Our uh, adjudicators are going to be tallying and the people at home are going to see what the points uh, board will stand and look like. But in the meantime, because we need to usher in those in quarantine who have been waiting for so long, we shall see you as you all uh, orderly shuffle out of the house, of the room. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, have a great day and I hope to see some of you in the coming rounds as we progress today. Great day. Starting with Chinoy, please lead us out. Skindura, goodbye. Nast, goodbye. I hope it's not goodbye forever. University of Zimbabwe, Lupane State University, Absolute Sports. Thank you so much. So as you can see there, they're shuttling out, they're going, and th that's actually the quarantine uh, team. They're leaving the quarantine area. Those are live pictures uh, from here at Herald House, looking very confident, as you can see there. And they're coming in uh, for what shall be episode two uh, in uh, to the studio, where they shall be ushered in, and they shall be going through the same questions that we went through with the first team and of course this is all done in the interests of seeking uh, that we are fair transparent and just now you're soon going to be seeing uh, the scores as uh, they come on screen uh, and we shall be knowing where people stand and of course uh, the team with the lowest points in this particular episode that we've just completed will be praying that their worst is better than the worst in the coming team.